Now I use web servers quite often, but I typically stick to what I know, that being Apache and Nginx. But I've come across Caddy a few times. I remember they were one of the first to use and build in Let's Encrypt for automatic HTTPS, but I've never actually delved deeper into it to see if it's maybe a better alternative for me. In this video, I'm gonna give it a try out and put it through a few different scenarios that I commonly use web servers for. Now here we are on the Caddy website and the front page is full of reasons and features of why you should use it. But really I'm gonna ignore this and jump to just testing it out in exactly what I need to use web server for. But before we jump in, one thing that I usually look over when reviewing a project like this is to understand how they're monetized and how open source they are. Because there's a lot of offerings out there that more or less can treat open source more as a demo product for marketing. And looking at Caddy, it doesn't seem like they lock anything away. They say here it is 100% truly open source with all functionality. And it looks like most of their revenue is driven by sponsorships, which they tie into their support offerings. We come down here, we can see they've got loads of different tiers, all with different levels of professional services and benefits that you can get at each tier, which I think is quite interesting how they've tied up their sponsorships and support offerings into this kind of one set of packages. Whereas with my offerings of Bookstack, I keep the sponsorships quite separate from support because I didn't want to conflate those two just to keep a buffer over influence and legal liabilities. I think what they're doing here is probably simpler in a way just to tie it into one set of offerings. But I did see they also have a store here where they do like t-shirts, backpacks and other bits. But I think their sponsorship packages here are really their main revenue driver. So to set the stage, I've already set up a public VPS via Linode. And I wanted to do this on a public IP address so that I can test out the automatic HTTPS stuff that Caddy has to offer. I know there's ways of doing that if it was on my private network and things like that, but I'm just trying to replicate a typical common scenario where you would have a public IP address. And this is addressed at caddy.danb.me. That's the domain that I'm using, where I've also installed a Bookstack instance and a couple of other little web apps that are running, which we'll come to later. And it's this server that I'm logged into on the command line here. So before we do anything else, I'm just going to quickly make sure that Apache is fully removed. Okay, there should be Apache removed. Let's just double check that my web server is now broken. There we go. So now let's see if we can get Caddy on here to do what we need to do. So jumping straight into the documentation, I'm going to go install and I have set up a Ubuntu server. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this all in. Okay, they all seem to install without too much problem. Let's clear this. And looking at the documentation, it installs it as a systemd service named Caddy. So let's just double check that. Systemctl status Caddy. So that looks like it's running, but let's see if it's serving anything by default. So if we go back over to the browser, and I'll remove the login path, and here we go. So it has got something going, and it even gives us some nice instructions. So it says where the default path is for web files, and it shows us where our caddy file is, which I believe is where we do all of our web server configuration. So that's quite nice that it provides us some guidance from there. So let's take a look at that caddy file and see what's inside that. So I'll use vim, let's see, caddy, and then it was caddy file. Okay, so it looks like it's providing a static file server from this path. And it said on the web page that we just saw, or it also says here to replace the port 80 below with your domain name. So let's give that a go. So it's caddy.danb.me. So we'll save this, systemctl, reload caddy. Now if we go back there, there we go. We're serving and it has automatically gone and get us a Let's Encrypt certificate. So that's all quite nice and simple. But now I want to see if I can get that Bookstack instance working again. So Bookstack itself is a PHP based application and it's not a super simple one to host because it's not the kind of one that you can just drag and drop the files to a web root and have it to run. You need to point the web server to a subfolder within the project. Plus there's a bit of URL rewriting needed to make sure all requests go to the same inbound PHP file. And in addition to that, it's also expected that some files would be directly served by the web server itself for static things like images, JavaScript, and CSS files. So let's see if I can go through the documentation and figure out how to achieve this. So I managed to quite quickly find this section on PHP and specifically PHP FPM. Now jumping back onto my server, I know that the install script that I used to install Bookstack that would have set up PHP FPM, but let me just double check that, checking the status of the PHP 8.3 FPM dot service. Cool, so PHP 8.3 FPM is running. So I'm gonna copy these directives in. 
and we'll edit our caddy file once again. Let's paste these. I'll get rid of this random O. Cool, so now I've got that in there twice. Delete those lines. And now let's change this path to point to the public web directory of my Bookstack instance, bar www.bookstack slash public. And I just thought it's got a PHB bit here, so we could have seen that earlier, but oh well. But I think the documentation is still useful because I think we need to change this to be the socket. If we come down here and copy this, copy just the value. There we go. And I'll change this to PHP 8.3 because I believe that's what we're running. I'm not sure this is the correct path though. Let's so run PHP, PHP 8.3, select an FPM. So if I save this and then I'll output the directory contents of the var run PHP directory. Okay, that looks correct. So it's var run PHP, PHP 8.3 slash hyphen FPM dot sock. All right, so if we reload caddy once again, and now I'll jump back, refresh the browser, is this gonna work? It's looking good. And when I say that, it's also looking quite bad. But I know it's looking good because it's redirected us to slash login, which is a default behavior of Bookstack. And now this kind of broken view that we're seeing here, I think is a side effect of needing to update Bookstack's configuration. So I'm just gonna to go to my Bookstack directory, edit the config, to tweak Bookstack to serve on HTTPS. I'll reload this. That seems to be working. Let's log in with the defaults. Seems to be working fine. Let's upload an image just to make sure that is working. Okay, that's working absolutely fine. Now I'm interested to see what protocol this is serving upon by default. Is it HTTP 2, HTTP 3, or HTTP 1.1? So let's inspect this and I'll go to the network tab of my browser and I'll refresh the page. And it looks like we've got a mix of HTTP 2 and HTTP 3. And it looks like that's provided for most Things. Maybe everything's static and then HTTP2 provided for the initial dynamic page. Not exactly sure on the reasoning behind the difference there, but maybe there's legitimate reasoning for that. But we can also see this is gzipped. So we've got compression on these, which was that part of our config. So checking the caddy file again. Yeah, we've got encode gzip. And it looks like by default it's being quite sensible about that. So it's not trying to gzip our PNG images because there's usually not that much value to those because PNGs are typically compressed by default. But it is compressing our text files like JavaScript and CSS and HTML. So I'm quite impressed by that. That seemed a little bit too easy. And look at the configuration. That is quite nice and simple. I mean, most of this is comments. There's a part of my mind thinking, should this be so easy? Is there some kind of scenarios which I'm not envisioning where this may actually be problematic? It might just be the case that Caddy is using defaults that are sensible for modern day applications, whereas you have to kind of tweak other web servers to fit those applications. Now, one thing I just thought to check quickly is to see if Caddy is providing directory listings by default. I'm gonna open up this image in a new tab. I'm going to tweak this URL just to see if we can, for example, look to see what's in this gallery folder. Okay, so going to that URL, it doesn't show us an output of that folder, which does exist within the directory system of this Bookstack installation, but instead it's routing that through to the Bookstack application, which I would say is a more sensible and secure default rather than showing a directory listing. So yeah, once again, quite impressed with that. So next up, I want to try a Kind of simple scenario i've got a little static website within this path bar www static and within here is an image and an index.html file and i want to see if i can easily host this but within that existing bookstack site that we set up so on a sub path which i'll put at slash cats can we have that pointing to this static site so i imagine we're going to need to do this by our caddy file once again so let's start editing that but now that we're in here i don't really know how to define a sub path so let's double check the reference linked here Let's try their quick start guide. So I haven't been able to find a specific example for what I'm after. Nothing that kind of says this is how you match on a subpath. I did come across this section here, which is showing multiple root elements. But I don't know whether having multiple root directives, as they call them here, is valid or whether this is just an example of multiple ways that you can define it. But why not give this a go of trying to define multiple and just see what happens within our caddy file? If we do this above again, I don't know if there's like order matching, if this is possible. But I'll put in another root here and the slash cat and maybe slash star and send that to var www says static and i'm not sure about this preceding slash either but i'll save this and I'll open another window so we can do systemctl reload caddy without closing the file 
And let's see if anything's broken. We'll go back to our book slash site. Okay, that's still running. It's in the URL. Let's go to slash cats. Okay, that's not found, but we did name it slash cat. So let's try again. That's still not found. Let's try with a slash. Okay, so that's something different, but it's not loading what I'd expect to see for our HTML file that I've got there. Let's try adding index.html to that. Still not seeing anything. So maybe this isn't the way to go. Maybe I need to change course on how I'm setting this up. Okay, after some further time, I've come across this handle path directory, which seems like it might be what we need. So let's give this a go. We can see some examples down here. So it's handle path and then our subpath essentially with the star and then our stuff within there. So let's edit our config to include this handle path slash cat slash star. We'll create a block and we'll make this a file server and set the root for everything within here to var www slash static. And I'll get rid of what we added earlier. So let's save this. And we'll reload the web server. And now if we go back, we go to just slash cat, still no, set a slash. Okay, that seems to be working quite nicely. Let's see if we can tweak that so we didn't have to have the slash. Now intuition said I could just get rid of the slash here. So consider this anything as slash cat. Now let's give this a test. And that's still loading the page, but now that reference to the image is broken. But that's more down to how to find the URL within that image. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Now, as a last scenario that I want to test out, again, something that I commonly use web servers for is for a proxying. In this case, I've got a Docker container running my RSS app, and my Docker container is currently just serving on port 8080. So here we're just accessing that directly. But instead, I'd like to access this going through Caddy over HTTPS, like you're already serving, at slash RSS. So when this setup, requests should come to Caddy and then that'll proxy it to my Docker container. Now I imagine this is gonna look something quite similar to what we just set up for the static site. So jumping into my config, let's get something very similar to this set up for the RSS path. And now this isn't a static file server or even something with a root path. We need to set up a reverse proxy, which conveniently enough, it looks like we've got an example of down here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that directly in. And it's even got the right port number for what we're already running RSS on. So I wonder if that will be enough. Now this one I am going to do with a slash. So let's save that. And again, we'll reload the config. And now instead of cat, let's go RSS slash. And it seems to be doing something, but it's not loading it up. And looking in the browser dev tools, I can see the initial page is loading, but then requests to the sub assets like the JavaScript file is failing because it's looking up at slash build, whereas really that needs to go to slash RSS slash build and then the path to the file. Oh, I remember seeing when we were looking at the handle path element that this does some prefix path handling. So it says this is the equivalent as using just handle and then this URL strip prefix directive. So it's likely the container isn't seeing that that RSS part is part of the path. So I'm wondering if we can instead just use handle instead of handle path. So let's give this a try and reload the web server. Let's refresh the page. And now we're getting a 404. And I guess the RSS app is receiving slash RSS on the path and it doesn't know what that is. So maybe that didn't help at all. So path handling can be quite problematic when you've got reverse proxies and apps that handle pathing in different ways. And I know from building this, I did define a mechanism to handle pathing and I've got that in the readme of RSS here. So this application uses the X forwarded prefix header to define what that path should be. And I know looking at this Nginx config, this also, I believe, is stripping the path. So let's see how we can define headers for proxies. So looking at some examples in the documentation, it looks like we can change our reverse proxy directive to have a block and use this header up directive to define a custom header. So let's make this into a block and then use the header up and going back to the documentation, it should essentially be this. We'll paste that in. So we're creating a header x forwarded prefix to slash RSS. It looks like this should be quoted. And I'm just going to change this back to handle path. I think that better matches what I'd expect from the Nginx example within the readme for RSS. Again, save that, reload caddy. I'll refresh this page. Awesome. So now that seems to be working. So we're at caddy.danb.me slash RSS. Can I go to a subpath within this? Just like I can, let's refresh this to make sure that still works. Okay, so that's all still working. Everything's displaying okay. It looks like we have got a working setup. So in review, looking back at our configuration here, I think 
This is quite minimal and quite simple. It seems there's a lot of common conventions or common defaults within Caddy that mean that you don't have to define a lot of stuff in the config. At least that's what it seems from this quick run through. And I do like how simple and readable this is. Now it took quite a while to understand how to set up some of these examples. A part of that is just gonna be familiarity and trying to get my head away of a decade of Nginx and Apache. But I imagine looking back, it probably took me a lot longer to get familiar with you know, the Apache and Nginx syntax. So overall, I am quite impressed and I think this will definitely be something that I'll look to if I have a use case in the future of setting up a new web server. And I imagine I've hardly touched on the feature set that Caddy can provide. I've only really just you know, tested it on what I already know. So maybe there are loads of other ways that Caddy can benefit me. But that's everything that I've got to go through in this video. If you've got any advisories on what I've set up here or any hints and tips or any experience of Caddy yourself, so I'd love to hear that in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this quick run through and I hope you have a wonderful day.